Hey, welcome back to 2DG. We've got another beer review coming up. You may have noticed that our surroundings have changed for the last several videos. Yes. The former location uh, is gone. We don't. Well, it's not gone. It's just, just access to it. Access is gone. Is denied. <laughs> so uh, we are trying to plan something a little better, but uh, we'll see. Not better than this, but than the last place. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so anyway, what's on tap today? <laughs> today, uh, it's kind of a special thing, but kind of not. Um, we have Stone's Ruin 10 Triple IPA with, this time, uh, orange peel and vanilla bean. Now, Ruin 10 started as a 10th anniversary IPA from Stone. 20, 12 well, years ago? <laughs> well, this is their, last year was their 20th anniversary, so this would technically be their 21st. Okay, I it was. Anyway, math. Um, basically, it was immensely popular when they released it, um, so they continued to release it in, uh, a year, yearly, annual. or annual, yes, an annual uh, availability. Vocabulary. Yep. <laughs> um, they've done some variations on it in the past, I believe, but this is the first one that I have seen. And I was hesitant to pick it up because it... Orange peel, fine, whatever, I don't, I don't really care about that in an IPA, but vanilla bean, that's going to be the interesting part. Yeah. But, I trust Stone. So, um, yeah, that's really all there is. Uh, it's severely West Coast based. Now, they did do a revamp on some of their IPAs a couple of years ago. They changed the formula, or recipe, I guess. But, I don't know if they did in this one. It doesn't look like it. So, this one should still be traditional, super West Coast style. Um, high alcohol, I believe it's 10%, 10.8. Um, so, Let's do this. Specialty bottle opener I just got from work. <laughs> I don't even know why. No real story. All right. All right, get that pretty logo in there. Now, I gotta say, I, I kinda hope this does better for me than my attempt at uh, Tangerine Express. I think it should. That was, uh, I don't know if it was my bottle or what, but I just wasn't getting out of it what I thought I should've. This so looks good. Oh yeah, it's a little darker than I thought it was gonna be. And then we'll I talk thought I saw some chunks there. <laughs> yeah, we'll see in this one. Ah oh, man, always like stone. Oh yeah. All right, so this one coming in a nice orangish, um, maybe verging on amber, but more yeah. slightly towards a golden orange color. Um, finger wise, uh, for me it's a full finger, half yeah. finger if you got big fingers. Super pillowy. Agreed. Um, little loose bubbles, but nothing, nothing nah, crazy. I would call it creamy pillow. Uh, what's the stiction? Stiction? It's a stone. What do you think? Let's find out. Yeah, stiction. Yeah, it's got stiction. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and get a nose on it. Alright. It's been a while since I smelled one like this, and it, it really impresses me. Super grapefruit forward, first and foremost. You get that orange in there. Now, it's kind of cool. So they say that there's orange mm. peel in this. I actually get orange peel in the aroma, which is a yes. little weird. Agreed. Slight pininess, not a lot. A lot of earth tone in this uh, one. There's though. a sticky sweet maltiness, too. Yeah, definitely the maltiness. You know, stone. Yeah, <laughs> definite earth body, though, to it. This one, to me, and, and you know I hate this, but this isn't dank at all, no, in no, my no. opinion. It's fruity. Which is kind of impressive. It's bright. A lot of lemon in this one. Slight lemongrass, not a lot. But nice herbal spiciness to it, though. I'm not really getting much vanilla, though. A little bit. Uh, you shouldn't get too much of it in an IPA, at least for, I mean, granted, yeah, most well, of them I'm don't. Just saying, but the orange peel and pineapple dominate, I think. I'm getting that weird kind of, almost like frosting sweetness smell to it. <laughs> Stone. <laughs> more, more towards the vanilla bean. But. Anyway, let's taste it. All right. Are you okay? I haven't had a beer this good in a while. I'm not, sorry? Not like this. 
This reminds me of starting out in craft beer when everything was just exciting and new. Oh, God. Okay. Huge orange on the back end. Huge orange on the back end. So, wow, okay. Man. Immediately up front, right. you're just assaulted by this bitterness. It's, it's ridiculous. Now, I believe, and I haven't checked in a while, but the IBUs on this particular one are well over 100. Um, so huge pop of that up front. Um, lots of that orange pithiness to it, um, which comes from the orange peel. A lot of grapefruit. A decent amount of pine, actually, yeah. uh, in the but flavor it, compared but to the aroma. But it's not overshadowing. Right, they're not fighting against each no. other. It's a nice, mellow flow. Now, I will say, aside from just the usual malt sweetness, I actually can detect the vanilla, which is nice. Which is what I was going to say. The orange, for me, on the back end, the orange, you swallow, the orange brightens. I mean, it blossoms out real sharp, I mean, but in a good way. And then, once it starts to fade... It's like the vanilla comes on real hard. I mean, but not badly. Beautifully. <laughs> um, you get that nice syrupy mouthfeel, but underneath everything, like underneath the assault that you, you know, get it right up, you know, first thing. Um, once you let it sit there for a little bit on the tongue, you get peach. You get yeah. a nice deepish apricot flavor. Um, but again, it melts, you know blends nicely together like i said all the way through the end obviously super dry so um nice orange not only just flavor but bitterness as well um if you ever bit into an orange peel you'll understand i get a lot of orange sweetness on the back interesting um fantastic That's yeah, <laughs> this one not that i didn't have faith but this one works a, a lot better than i thought just based on what the bottle said. No, when it said vanilla bean, I was like, eh, well. The vanilla's there the whole time, yeah. too, but it doesn't, again, overshadow. It plays so well with the other flavor. The, it really plays well with, it's like, first you, it interacts with, with the malt and balances through there. And then the malt and, and vanilla comes shooting through yeah. and hit that orange. And it just creates, like, this, I don't know, stupid tornado of flavor that just keeps swirling and, and accenting each other. It's really touche, fabulous. Wow. So, a couple things. Number one, um, oh, man, it says it on the bottle that it's a triple IPA. Basically, and this is kind of, I don't know if it's debated or not, but it's debated at least with myself. Uh, an IPA is generally anywhere from, now they do sessionable, so anywhere from about 4.5% up to 6.9. Then once you hit 7%, to about 9 point, I guess 9.9 percent, .9%, you're at a double. After that, 10 percent above, they technically can qualify it as a triple IPA. However, I've had a bunch of IPAs that are at that level that aren't technically considered triple IPA. The reason I bring it up is because on rate beer, which their credibility is shit now. Um, <laughs> AB InBev's rate beer? Yep, AB InBev's rate beer. Okay. Uh, their style is an imperial IPA. So technically only a double. Well, okay. But. But along that line, I think that historically you had an ale, you had an IPA, and then you had an imperial IPA. It's like, if you're a giant, does it matter how big you are? Tell no. to shack. You can't have a giant giant. So that's why I think historically anything above this X threshold was an imperial. So. Well, I mean, think about it. You have... Pliny the Elder, which is an Imperial or a double, and you have Pliny the Younger, which is a triple. But right? technically, under the old standards, they're the same. That's why I'm saying it's debated. Right, exactly. So, the old standards, it's all the same. What we're going to do, because I don't think we even have a triple IPA category on the channel so far, we're going to go ahead and review this as a double or an Imperial. We'll say Imperial uh, IPA. It'll be in the, the ales, which I'm going to work on. Yeah, he's got to work on that. <laughs> Because technically there's only two classifications of beer. So, style-wise, they give it a 93. Overall, they bump it up to a 98. Imperial IPA, double, whatever the hell. What do you get it? I'm going to go flat 10. 
A flat 10. Well, good, because that's the highest that we can go. Well, I just don't... I, I don't think there's any way to improve upon this. I think it's perfectly balanced. It's, it is what it says it is. I think it's gorgeous from start to finish. It's got... You said it had a syrupy mouthfeel. It does, but it's not a thick syrup. It's a nice coat that works well and lifts those flavors. Everything about this works. One aspect that you might notice just accentuates another. I think it's I think it's a fabulous beer. I I lied real quick about the Ruin Ten um, namesake. It isn't ten years to celebrate to celebrate the brewery. It's ten years of the original um, release of Ruination IPA. Oh. Excuse me, I want to correct myself on that. Um, I th have we done Ruination regularly? I don't think we have. I don't know. If we, yeah, whatever. Um, what I'll say, the fruit's coming out more because it's starting to warm up. Granted, it wasn't as chilled as it probably should have been, but it's, it's definitely coming out more. I so think it's, the pine is, too. Yeah, so it's super layered um, in terms of that. Uh, I'll give it a 10 as well. Um, it's When you start out, at least when we did, this was before Julius and that New England shit was even a thing. Um, you had, this was before I really even had three Floyds. It was basically West Coast. Or East Coast. East Coast, Dogfish Head, super multi-balanced beer. West Coast, Stone. Yeah, it was Stone. Um, <laughs> we won't, wow. I won't consider uh, Sierra Nevada's because they weren't the same thing. West Coast IPA, in my opinion, started with Stone. Just blow the hell out of your mouth, your taste buds, everything with just hops. Just assault the hell out of you. Um... This is a perfect example of that, and that was my first go-to style, right? So, um, I think Stone was the first craft that really said, "This is what we can be." Yeah. To so, me, you know, for me, the, it the, was like <laughs> the cool thing is, like, if you and I, I've read, I've read their book, or Greg's book with uh, his partner. Um, I think it's Steve. Correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, they founded the brewery or whatever. But their first beer that they did, I believe, was their porter. Um, and then they did pale ale, and then they did IPA, which people at the time, even for the pale ale, I believe, was way too hoppy, or the IBUs were too high. And then with the IPA, they think they bumped it at least up by 20 IBUs, and people just didn't understand it. Instead of Stone bowing to the masses, they're like, well, okay, they're like, nah. They're like, get on board. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of cool. So if you know the story real quick, uh, Arrogant Bastard, when they did that one, it was actually a mistake. Um... <laughs> And then it was just obviously adopted into this cult following type of thing. Some of the best things in the world are mistakes. Um, but no, so they went to a beer festival, and people wanted to try Arrogant Bastard, mostly because of the name. And Greg Cook said, no, you're going to do the Porter, then you'll do the Pail, then you'll do the IPA, then you're allowed to try Arrogant Bastard. So just the whole the overall mentality of this thing is awesome. But, um, yeah, 10... It's awesome. Uh, overall, 10. I love it. I would like to drink this a lot. Um, I hope they repeat this variation. Um, 10. I mean, <laughs> I, I said everything already. So, there you go. Um, stay tuned. So, the next video. I'm going to say the next video. Yeah, maybe. No. Won't be the next video. It'll be the video after the next one. <laughs> Two videos from now. We're going to have a let's talk. It'll be a little bit different. Normally we've addressed news or that kind of thing. This one involves you. And us, selfishly. Yeah. But also you. <laughs> um, teaser. Are you playing favorites again? No, I'm not. You know what? No right. teaser. Just watch. You're gonna anyway. Like, comment, subscribe. The dinger bell's up there. Uh, yep. 2DD. See you, man.